go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is John Osteen, a ministry fulfilling the Great Commission. From Houston, John Osteen has established an international outreach of compassion for suffering people all over the world. His thrust is to all nations, to reach the unreached, the multitudes that need the good news of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, John Osteen. Well, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome you to the program. Today we're going to talk about physical healing, how God can heal you, how you can have your needs met. I know many of you are suffering. I know many of you are fighting problems with your body. I'll tell you, Jesus is a mighty healer, and God's Word is clear on God's will to heal. I know many of you have been taught differently, but I want you to stay tuned today and view the program and listen with all of your heart, and God's going to help you. Let's go live into the program now, and I'll be teaching you the Word of God. I'm going to teach you today out of the book of John, chapter 5. How many of you enjoy studying the Bible? Say amen. amen. John, chapter 5. This is one of the great miracles of Jesus. Thank God he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're going to read about him. You know, really, look up here just a minute and let me talk to you. If Jesus Christ has changed, then we ought not to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because he's not the same Jesus. That would just torment us. But thank God when we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we can say with every chapter, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. John chapter 5. All right. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent or sick people, a blind, of halt, of withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season unto the pool and troubled the water, and whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man which was there, and he had a sickness or an infirmity, how many years? 38 years. Everybody shout 38 years. 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Do you want to get well? Wilt thou be made whole? And the sick man answered and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in to the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. Can you say amen? amen? And he took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It's not lawful for you to carry your bed. And he answered, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away in a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, and, and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made, it whole, made him whole, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Now, isn't that an amazing passage of Scripture? Are you all out there listening to me? Yeah. Is your heart open to receive the Word of God? Yeah. You know, I, I think about this great multitude of people around that pool, all kind of sick people. Now, I think about many of you come in here from all walks of life and and you have sicknesses, and you have diseases, and you have hurts, and, and you want somebody to pray for you. Thank God for this oasis of love. I thank God for all of the places that, uh, that reach out in love to people that want to be healed. And I know many of you 
There are multitudes of people listening to me now, viewing right now by way of television. You have a sickness and disease that you desire God to heal you of. You have trouble you wish you could get out of. You have heartaches. You have broken hearts. I'm telling you, the storms of life come upon all of us, but this is a day of deliverance. I said, this is a day of deliverance. Now, there are a great multitude of people are, are around that pool, and Jesus comes by there, and he begins to talk to one man. Now, it's God's will to heal them all. And yet, only one man got healed there at that pool. Well, why do some get healed and some do not get healed? Well, some get healed because they listen well. Some get healed because they don't remain in ignorance. Some get healed because they hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some turn it off. They do not listen. But now this man was lying there in a great multitude of people as though he didn't really count. And you know, I know sometimes people who are so sick and so destitute in life, they think, well, of all the billions of people that are on the earth, how could God ever see me? Well, I want you to know tonight that every one of you are, every one of you is important to God, and you're not just a number, you're not just a, a, a lost in the crowd, you, are, you have a concern in the heart of God, God is concerned about you, and God wants you to be full of life and have it more abundantly. He wants you well, he wants you strong. You see, the troubling of the waters here is a very interesting thing. God sent an angel down there to trouble this water. And I don't know how it all started. The Bible doesn't tell us that, but evidently it was a well-known fact that an angel came down and troubled that water. Somehow it started, so maybe somebody saw the angel put a staff in there and stir it up, I don't know. But everybody knew that an angel came and troubled the water and whoever got in there first got healed. That was what they knew to be a fact. Now why would such a thing be in the Bible? Why would God do anything like that? Well, you see, God was trying his best to keep the healing message of his miraculous power alive in the hearts and lives of people. You see, the last book in the Old Testament is the book of... A book of... The book of Malachi. You see, between Malachi and the time John the Baptist stood and cried, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, there were three or four hundred years. No voice. Nobody crying out. Silence. It was the time of the Maccabees. It was a time of centuries of silence. God spoke not through a prophet. There's no record of God dealing with the human race as far as a prophetic utterance during that time. But you see in the book of Malachi, God is very careful to say these words. I am the Lord, I change not. You see, God revealed himself as a mighty, healing, miraculous, miracle-working God in the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. God unveiled his great and marvelous mercy and love and showed the human race beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was his will to heal people. He said, you shall serve the Lord and he'll bless your bread. He'll bless your water. He'll take sickness out of the midst of you and nothing will cast its young or be barren in your land and the number of thy days I will fulfill. He said, you shall serve the Lord and he'll take all sickness out of the midst of you. David cried, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all of thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. You see, that was the revelation of God. They knew that God was interested in their physical bodies, in the healing of their emotions, in the healing of their minds. They knew that God was Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heals. But you see, God knew that there was a danger during that time of Malachi on the John, uh, John the Baptist that they would lose sight of his healing power, and that's exactly what happened. 
When John the Baptist came on the scene and when Jesus came on the scene, there was a pitiful condition in the religious world. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, and all the other religious people had lost sight of God's healing power. In fact, they were so caught up in their religious doctrines and rules, they didn't care and have compassion for mankind that was sick and suffering. The Bible says that when Jesus cleansed the temple, then the blind and the halt came to him and were healed. He had to cleanse the temple. You see the Pharisees here, as soon as Jesus healed this man, they, they began to persecute Jesus. What for? Adultery? No. Murder? No. Uh, lying? No. He was persecuted for healing poor, sick, suffering humanity. Over there in the book of Acts, when they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to act like Jesus, and Peter and John went down to the gate of the temple, and there they saw this man crippled from his mother's womb, and they said, Silver and gold have I none but such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise and walk. And I mean he rose and walked. I mean God healed that man. Faith in Jesus' name healed that man. Now you would think everybody in town would be glad. You'd think everybody would shout, Hallelujah! But you see, all the people, the religious people of that day, got together and began to persecute them and put them in jail. And they said, We don't want this doctrine. Let's command them that they no longer speak in the name of Jesus. You know what they're saying? We don't want any more cripples healed. We don't want any more blind people healed. We don't want any more sick people healed. We want them to stay like they are. We don't want them to speak in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They persecuted them for preaching that Jesus Christ could heal. You know, God knew that was going to happen. He said, oh, I'm so concerned about the sick in America and the sick in Africa and the sick in India and the sick in the Philippine Islands and in Australia and in New Zealand and in Guatemala and in Mexico and in Central America and South America and around the world. He said, I'm so interested. If it takes an angel, I'll send an angel down to trouble the water so at least somebody will get healed. Do you see that? Well, oh, come on. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, the sad part of it is this, that today we are almost in the same identical condition that they were back there in the days of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You know, the churches of our day do not cast out devils. They cast out people who cast out devils. You want to you wanna get real popular in a normal church today? Begin to lay hands on the sick and cast out devils like Jesus. You'll get real unpopular real fast. But you know, I thank God that that's changing. I thank God the compassion of Jesus is entering into preachers and God is moving among all denominations and there's a new day today. It's not going to be like it was in the past. The body of Christ is being bathed in love and compassion and in these last days we'll not be a sick church. We'll be whole and filled with God's power all over the world. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what I prophesy. I prophesy John Osteen will preach in the cathedrals, the Catholic cathedrals, the high church cathedrals, the denominational churches, and we'll bring God's healing message to God's people, and he'll reveal his love and power. I confess that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now this man was in this condition, and he was lying by this pool, and, uh, and Jesus came by. And he said, uh, uh, do you want to get well? That's a good question to ask people. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Let me ask you folks who are watching by way of television. Do you want to get well? Do you really want to get well? You see, a lot of people don't really want to get well. They just think they want to get well. They, they, just, they just have a half-hearted attitude about getting well. I, I don't know about you, but I tell you, when I get sick, I want to get well because I hurt real bad when I get sick. I don't want to fool around with it. There's no question about it. 
Dodie says, when you hurt, you hurt bigger than anybody else and longer and you're worse than anybody else. I said, yes, that's right. And I want to get healed quicker than anybody else. Amen. Jesus said, do you want to get well? Let me ask you a question. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Do you want to have health and strength in your life? I'll tell you, there's not anything in the world that I want any more than just a healthy body because if the devil can kill this body, I won't be here, see, to preach the gospel. And I'll tell you this, I'm confessing God's going to keep it alive and keep it full of energy and eternal life and strength as long as he wants me on this earth. I want to be well. Amen. Everybody shout, I want to be well. I hear some of you saying, oh, Brother Osteen, if you just knew how, how much I want to be well. Oh, how I want to be well. I wish I could be well. I, I hear that heart cry uh, from the television audience right now. Well, now, this, this man was lying there, and Jesus said, do you want to get well? Oh, there's such a desire in the hearts of people to get well. Oh, people, people know that, that sickness is an evil malignancy in the human race. Even doctors who do not know God know that it's a, it's a rampant evil. Sickness is not a blessing. Sickness is a curse. It's not from heaven. It's from hell. It's not our friend. It's our enemy. It's no blessing. It robs a mother of children. It robs a husband of a wife. It robs a wife of a husband. It robs us of our money. It puts us into hospitals. It drags us down. It's not a blessing to hug to our bosom. It's the curse of the devil. And Jesus died to set us free from the curse. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, do you want to get well? Now, this man... As I've taught often, I like this. He was waiting for three things, and he didn't need either one of them. Three things. He said, I have no man. Everybody say man. man. He said, when the angel comes, say angel. angel. He said, when the water is troubled, say troubled water. troubled water. Now, those three things were the things that this man was waiting for, and he didn't need either one of them. Lots of people are waiting for a man. They're waiting for a man. You know, there are many wonderful servants of God today that, that do pray for the sick and see mighty miracles of God. And, and I know it's wonderful to have them pray for you and to lay hands on you. But you see, if you get your eyes on a man, you've got your eyes in the wrong direction. He said, Lord, I have no man. I have no man. Then he was looking for an angel. Well, thank God for that angel that came down there but I thank God we're in the day of grace and under the new covenant we don't have to have an angel present to get us healed. Thank God for those that accompany us back and forth as we heard here to, uh, in this service. He was waiting for a man. He was waiting for an angel. And he was waiting for the troubling of the waters. Oh, if I can just get into a great Holy Ghost revival, some place where the wall, walls are falling down, where there's a great stirring, you know, and God is moving, uh, and they just run all over the country. God's moving up there. God's moving here. Let's run over here. Let's run over here. Let's run. Oh, that's all right. I, I'm telling you, I'm glad God's moving in certain places. But I'm here to tell you, this man was waiting on a man. He was waiting on an angel. He was waiting on troubling of the waters. And he didn't need any of them. Because Jesus was right there where he was. I want you to know that Jesus is right there where you are. He is the son of the living God. He is the bright and morning star. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, your healer. He's the one born of the Virgin Mary. He's the one that walked the shores of Galilee. He's the one that opened the eyes of the blind and made the lepers clean, be clean. He's the one that raised the dead. He's the one that went to the cross and died that ignominious death. He bore your sins and your sicknesses in his own body. He's the one that went to hell. He's the one that rose again. He's the one that ascended to the Father with his own blood to obtain eternal redemption for you. He's there with you right now. Amen. Jesus is in this audience right now. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
He said, if you'll do that, Brother Osteen, I promise you two things. First of all, I'll go with you and always be with you. And secondly, I'll confirm the word with signs following. Well, I'm here preaching the gospel, so I know he's, he's here with me. Well, he told you, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, so shout out, he's with me. He's with me. Well, if he's with you, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you don't need the troubling of the waters, you don't need a man, you don't need an angel, you got the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, your healer. Amen. Well, come on, let's praise him. Did you know that this man was sick because he had been sinning? Somebody said, Brother Osteen, do you think I'm sick because I, I've been sinning? Probably so. I know when I got ulcer in the stomach, it was because I'd been sinning. I'd been worrying and, and fretting and not trusting in God like I ought to. Now, I'm not saying everybody that's sitting there in sickness, it's your son, great sinner, and that there's one particular sin, but let's don't rule out the fact that maybe we ought to repent of some sin. Oh, the greatest thing in the world we can do to get our healing is to go before God and let his searching, loving eyes search us out and be willing to examine our own lives and to lay aside what we know is wrong and to repent of what we know we've done wrong and to cleanse out our lives so the healing power of God can flow into us. Are you all out there? Amen. The first thing we ought to do when we get sick is start examining ourselves. Oh God, what have I done? Where have I missed you? Why am I in the condition I'm in? Why, what have I done? You see, Jesus said to this man, Go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. That's the reason physical healing is not the greatest thing that will happen to you because in the process of getting physical healing, some great spiritual things will happen to you that will be greater than the physical healing. Do you want to get well? Do you want to be free from arthritis, migraine headaches, a spine that's afflicted, afflicted and, and, and diseased? Do you want that, that disease in your bones to be taken away by the power of God? Do you want your ribs healed? Do you want your heart healed? Do you, want to re do, do you really want to get well? Now, I'm speaking by revelation. I believe people that are here tonight and will listen uh, to, the, to this telecast, I believe God is speaking to people because God knows all things. He knows whoever will watch and listen to this, to this program. And God wants to reach out and he wants to do something for you. Now, we're going to do something here real quick. We're going to do something to break all the power of the devil and to give him no leeway in your life so that the healing power of God can come in. How many of you would like for God's healing power to flow right now on you and on the television audience? If so, lift your hand and say amen. amen. All right, lift one hand to God right now, and I want the television audience to pray with us. Say, oh God, I want to be well. Oh, I want to be well. I want this sickness. I want this disease. I want this torment to leave my body, to leave my mind, to leave my being. I want health. I want strength. I want to be free of pain. Oh, God, look into my heart. You know what I am. You know what I've done. Lay your hand upon that which is wrong. Reveal to me what I need to turn from. Oh, Lord, I hold on to no sin. I turn away from all wrong. Forgive me, oh, God. Cleanse me, oh, God. I repent, I repent of rebellion, rebellion of hard-heartedness, hard unforgiveness, unforgiveness in my heart. In my heart. I, repent I repent of worldliness, of, worldliness, of things that displease you. That displease oh, God, you. Oh, God. oh God, I've been harsh I've been and mean and, mean and, and ugly to others. I haven't paid my bills. I haven't, I haven't treated others right. Oh God, forgive me. Oh God. I don't plead my case. I, I plead guilty. I want you to cleanse me. Oh God, I humble myself. I humble myself. Oh Lord, I bow before you. Lord, you are God. Jesus, you are Lord. And I submit myself to you. Oh God, cleanse me. Save me. Wash me. And let your healing power flow into my life. 
Thank you, Jesus. Now be real still. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this audience here, and I pray for the television audience. I pray for those who are viewing right now. I pray that your healing power will flow into their lives. Oh, God, heal them and heal them now. In the name of Jesus Christ, be thou made holy. Hallelujah.